Hello, elementary administrators. This Bite Size PD is for you. The topic is a new feature that's available in Canvas that we have not um, fully put out there for our elementary teachers yet. We do have our Canyons online, elementary and middle school teachers using it. Um, and we're, the reason why this topic is Canvas for Elementary theme opt-in is we are allowing some elementary teachers to choose to use this new feature throughout the year um, to really help us get feedback, try it out, and see if this is something that moving forward that we'd want our elementary teachers to use. Um, and speaking with my colleagues in other districts, uh, specifically Ogden, Davis, and Jordan School District, they've all enabled this theme that you're about to see and experience um, in their districts. And the feedback has been overwhelmingly positive. Now, the only caveat that they've said is anyone who's never used Canvas has been, been able to jump in with both feet, move forward with no issues. Anyone who's used Canvas before it moves the cheese just enough that some of the processes are a little different. Uh, no content is lost, like anything teachers have been making, creating, um, and a lot of the processes are the same, but some of those elements have moved or shifted in such a way that it can be a little uncomfortable at first. So with that said, as we go through this presentation today, um, I want you to think about how does this look to you as an administrator based on feedback you've received from parents, from teachers, and what are your thoughts about this theme for Canvas and how it truly can support our Canvas or elementary use um, or Canvas use in elementary? So the learning intention and success criteria for this Bite Size PD, um, I'm learning about the new feature Canvas for elementary and how it's different than the current Canvas theme being used in Canyon School District. I know I'm successful when I can identify the difference between the current version and this elementary theme. So here's the agenda. I will be jumping out of this um, Google Slides presentation, but I will be providing a link to the presentation if you want to review it later. Um, so I will be going, giving you an actual student view versus a teacher view. Um, I'll have I'll talk about some feedback and questions, like things that you can like way to collaborate with me, and then if you're an administrator and you're still like, I'm not quite sold into using Canvas in elementary, specifically K2, I have a bite-sized PD I'm going to recommend for you to watch. It's the same presentation that I did at district day. So if you were there and or you watched it and you saw my Canvas for elementary presentation, it's the same thing. Um, but I wanted to go through it again because I know a lot of information was pushed out to teachers during uh, district day. And I'll be totally transparent that Canvas for Elementary presentation that I did, I specifically developed that for our K2 teachers. Because I recognize, especially when it comes to Canvas, sometimes the examples, <clears throat> not sometimes, most times the examples are for like the third, fourth, and fifth grade. It's easier to make those connections. So I really, I didn't have to dive too deep. I didn't have to dig too deep or even, um, I mean, I have been able to find actual concrete examples from teachers in our own district of how they were realistically using Canvas in our K2 classroom, and not just online. So I wasn't just pulling examples from online teachers last year. It's actual in-person, uh, in-person blended, um, also online teachers that I was giving the examples from. So there is a direct link to that um, Bite Size PD there, um, as well as the slideshow that you can have access to. So before I jump out of the slideshow, just so you know, this Google Slides, if you ever want to revisit it, will have screenshots of some of the things I'm about to show you with some of the highlights of what is the difference in these um, uh, this new theme compared to the classic theme that we're used to. So I have the student view versus, we'll talk about this, and then the teacher view as well. So I'm going to jump out and I'm actually going to go into Canvas and we are going to visit Canvas as a student, um, a first grade student named Susie Campus. So we are logged into her account right now. I want to point out just a few of the, of the major differences that you're going to see. This blue bar on the left hand side of the screen, this is the global navigation. And it's usually it's pretty standard for every user. What's different with this Canvas for elementary theme is you'll notice there's a home this normally says dashboard. Um, underneath it normally says courses. In this Canvas for Elementary theme, it says subjects. And then everything else looks the same. You have the account, the calendar, the messaging, the inbox, um, a history, and the help and resources. 
So the main difference on this global navigation is it now says home versus an odometer that says dashboard and it specifically says subjects. Now, something if you don't know this about our Canvas, <clears throat> the way our Canvas courses get set up or synced from Skyward, they are very much directly tied to the enrollments in Skyward. So for our elementary teachers, uh, normally what gets created through the Canvas Skyward Sync is a homeroom course, ELA, math, and depending on the grade, science. So most teachers will have at least three, if not four, Canvas courses created for them every year um, through the Canvas Skyward Sync. And with that sync, it's updated nightly. So if students are coming in or, or leaving the classroom, those enrollments will update as well. So what you're seeing right now on Susie's um, homeroom, so she's actually on the home screen, so she's now in the homeroom of her Canvas course. There's a homeroom course, and the only thing that she's going to see are announcements that the teacher is posting from that homeroom course. So what I chose to do, and this is one of the things that as we start exploring this feature, we really want to think about what's the most beneficial thing to have posted as an announcement. So what I did is I created a Google Slides presentation and I put the information, like you'll see here's a picture of me, my welcome message, a link to my, my contact information, my disclosure statement. Um, this week we are learning and I plan to update this every week. So as a parent or student comes, they know, hey, this week, this is what's being covered in all subjects. Um, but then I can also have my contact information where this link right here, that's what it links to. Um, but this is the part like what this announcement is going to look like is kind of what we're trying to think through because something I've learned from Canvas as I've been exploring this, this announcement will last for two weeks, meaning the teacher has to continually update it. So it can be a Google Slides presentation or maybe it is um, text that can be there. Um, but something else I've learned is under the resources tab, there's a section called important information. And this is where the teacher could identify um, maybe important phone numbers or websites for them to access, or um, maybe this is where I can put links to my disclosure statement, um, my back to school slides. So really thinking about what can be, be here. And while I'm on this, this tab, I wanted to show you the student applications. These are applications that have been, um, they're actually enabled through Canvas right now. So for our elementary, Google Drive, Nearpod, Clever, and Connect Ed tend to be the ones that most teachers will have enabled in their Canvas courses. It just provides quick links to these specific programs, or they're also enabled so the teacher can actually embed things like a Nearpod or um, a Google Docs or a Google Slides presentation in their Canvas course. And when I want to go back to my subjects, I go to Homeroom, and if you scroll down, you'll also see their subjects. So right off the bat, I'm actually seeing my ELA course, my math, and my science. So teachers are actually able to update these course cards. And when I was developing this for a first grade student, I recognized that first grade students, kindergarten students, aren't necessarily going to read or be able to read or truly understand these words. I mean, they might be able to, but to really make it obvious, here's our ELA course, here's our math course, I want to make it as visual as possible. So that's where I have ABC, one, two, three, and the globe. And with our current Canvas um, theme, teachers can update these cord, these cards, um, and they, but the friendly name is what's unique, that they actually can um, really make this more of a friendly name, um, something that they can actually, quick, students, students and parents can quickly identify. Um, something else you'll notice that I had nothing due today, but as assignments are being posted or things with due dates are added to these different subjects, that will appear on the course card and if there's any announcements. So I can see that in my ELA course, I do have an announcement posted. Before I click into to the subjects, just to kind of highlight a couple more things on the screen, um, there is a schedule, and this will actually list a schedule for all of the subjects. So anything that has an announcement, um, anything that has a due date, anything that's listed as an important date, if, student, if teachers are using Zoom, the Zoom will actually, the Zoom link can actually appear here as well. And then the grades tab will actually provide an overview of the grades. So if a parent or student wants to maybe dive deeper into this, they can click on the link to the subject and it takes them right to that grade book. Now with elementary, because we don't necessarily use the Canvas grade book, um, this could be hidden if teachers hide the grades from the navigation in all of their subjects. So kind of keep that in mind. 
Last thing I'll point out before we jump into a subject is the important dates. So this is something that is specified by the teacher. It can be added, um, there's basically a little box that the teachers check that say, mark this as an important date. And then it actually will appear on this important date column. So the teacher can access those or, or create those through the calendar. So you'll see I just identified parent-teacher conferences. Maybe our class is doing a wax museum or maybe there's an important assignment coming up. And even in assignments, um, as teachers are creating assignments in their camp in their subjects, they can actually say mark this as an important date, and it'll actually appear on this calendar or on this important date section. So I'm going to jump into one of the subjects. So let's go into ELA. And something that I did is I actually created an announcement, and like the announcement on our home in our homeroom page. Um, this has to be updated every two weeks, otherwise it just disappears. Um, so what I liked to do, and I've seen examples of this and I really liked it, I was able to tailor this um, announcement to be ELA specific. I don't really necessarily have anything here right now, but you can see where I'm going. So I can actually say, here's my learning intention success criteria specifically for ELA. And then my success criteria. And these are things our teachers are already needing to create, or not create, but post in their classrooms as they're going through the lessons. So it's not like it's one more thing that they have to do. They already have these. They're just making it more visual for the parents who are at home. And if I scroll down, um, I've just updated this subject homepage to not have all of the information um, that we require on every homepage um, in the current Canvas theme. So I can have a welcome message that's tailored specifically for ELA. It can be anything from, hey, in our ELA, or here's what we're focus focusing on ELA this year in this grade. Um, it can be updated as often as teachers want to. This is not something that updates every two weeks like the announcements. Um, but then something I did is I actually created these buttons. Um, and this is using one of the Canvas um, course templates that we provide in Canvas Commons where maybe all I need teacher students to do is, hey, when we go to morning meeting, here's a button I want you to click and that'll give information. Skill-based instruction, maybe something for you do, Reading Street, maybe a button specifically for parents. But the idea with this subject is that everything in this specific subject is related to ELA. Now, I do have grades enabled, so there is still a way for teachers to um, manipulate and add and delete things from this navigation bar. But what's different from our current Canvas theme is these navigation buttons are at the top, not across, not, not on the side. But I'm hoping you're seeing as I'm clicking and talking through this, just the layout itself is simple, simple enough that it's not quite as intense for our K-5 students. Um, there is a grade section, and this is very specific to this subject. Um, if a teacher chooses to use modules, this is where um, that content is found and the modules works just like it does in our current Canvas, um, our Canvas theme. And then there is a schedule. Once again, unlike the homeroom, this is very specific to this ELA subject. And then the resources, it brings over, it doesn't bring over the important information I had on the home screen, but if there's any important information I want to link that is specific to ELA, I can put here. So maybe there are some um, specific ongoing practices I want people to always have access to. I can put them here. I can also have them as a link here for parents. Um, if I go back to my home screen, and this, the setup is the same for math and ELA, or math and science. But when I click into here, something I wanted to notice, I want you to notice is the navigation looks the same. Um, I don't have an announcement here. It just jumps right into a home page that looks very similar to what our home pages, like our home page expectations are currently. And that's where I would probably more than likely change this up where I don't have to meet the teacher. I don't have to have important information. We can jump right into anything that's math specific. So I'm going to click back into that ELA course just because I really like the look of this. I really want you to just take it in again of how could your teachers utilize this new canvas theme to really help students stay connected to the learning because one thing i even think about with using canvas in k5 is when i was a fifth grade teacher 
I had students who'd be absent. I mean, I had one student who was consistently absent on Fridays or, you know, you always have kids go on vacation. And ultimately when they come back, they always ask the question, hey, did I miss anything while I was gone? And that's where I can view Canvas as a way to help them stay connected, whether if they're on vacation, maybe they can check in, or when they come back, they can catch up on some things, um, participate in some activities that happen while they were away. So I'm gonna look at my list real quick and just make sure there's nothing else I'm missing that I wanna make sure I'm pointing out about the student view. And then we'll jump into the teacher view. Okay, so let's go to the teacher view of Canvas. So with the teacher view, it's very similar to the student view. Um, notice how my navigation, my home, I have the home, I have subjects. Um, an addition that I have is this to-do. So this to-do is really helpful for teachers if they're assigning things with due dates. Um, if they go here, they can actually see what's being submitted and it's a way for them to um, grade from this location. But you'll see I have the important date section, just like my students. I have my announcement that I'm able to edit. And once again, I have to remember every two weeks, um, I have to continually post, otherwise nothing will be here. So I have my first grade homeroom, and then you have my subjects. And in addition to like, um, Susie Campus was only seeing my ELA, my math, and there was one more she was seeing. Um, I don't remember which one she was seeing. Anyway, she was seeing three courses, but I'm seeing everything that I'm a part I'm a part of. Now the teachers do have the ability to go back to the classic view, but I always recommend if you're using this new view. Stick with the homeroom view because you want to make sure if teachers or students or um, parents have questions, you can um, help them with that. But as a teacher, once again, I, I told you before, it, it moves the cheese just enough where some of the processes will feel a little different, it can be a little uncomfortable, but they don't lose any content. Once they know where they're going, um, the processes of creating, adding are the same. So as a teacher, Usually with the classic view, everything I need is off to the side, like how I go to pages, to modules, um, my settings. What they're going to see now is this manage subject. So when I go to manage subject, I now get to a screen that I'm more familiar with. And this is where I can actually update my card image. Something that's new that wasn't available just a few weeks ago is that wide banner image. And that is the image that students see when they're in the Canvas course. So before it was tied to what the subject card was, but now I can have a subject card and then I can actually choose an image. So you can even think about the possibilities of, of what do you wanna have here at the top of the page? So as students and parents are working through this, notice that banner never moves. And so does it help us to have an image so I can remember that, hey, I'm in the ELA course, or is there important information you wanna have posted there that's continually in their face? Um, and then with the teacher view, I'm going to look at my notes because I don't think there's much I'm going to cover. Just letting you know that, once again, the teachers, their processes will be the same. It's just we've moved the cheese a little bit to, um, there's a little bit of learning that has to happen. Um, one thing I do want to show, um, I'm going to go back to the homeroom. I'm going to show you the homeroom class because... The only thing, once we enable that as a homeroom class, the only thing they're able to do is, I should click into it. They're only able to create the announcement and they're only able to add the important information. They can see the people, so they can actually see the students who are there and they can adjust their settings. So at any time, this homeroom can be disabled as a homeroom course, but um, in order for it to show up this way in the student view, where all I'm seeing is the announcement, um, that course has to be enabled as a homeroom course. And you may be hearing that going, I don't, I don't know what you mean by that, Camille, and that's okay. Um, it's just something, it's one of the steps we have to do in order to make the look look this way. But you can see here's my announcements, and then here's my important information section. It is the teacher. I can actually edit and add whatever I want to. But I'll even click on edit so you can see the editing process is the same for our teachers. So I cruised through those demos pretty quick. And as a reminder, the presentation I have will actually have some screenshots 
and some of the bulleted items of what this can do. So as the administrator, I really want you to think about what would this, would this actually be beneficial for our elementary students um, and parents? Because I know a lot of times the parents, the students are home, the parents are the ones helping. And a little tidbit about Canvas is we have a lot of Canvas employees who are actually parents in our district. And so I think through the year of COVID, they were in home learning, they were seeing their elementary students work with Canvas and recognizing that, okay, there needs to be some adjust adjustments for our little students um, just because they don't need exactly what our middle school, high school students need when it comes to Canvas. So I wanted to talk about this opt-in opportunity for teachers. So we're allowing, because I recognize this isn't something I wanted to push out to all elementary teachers this year, because I'm not even 100% sure it's the best way to go yet. I wanted some teachers to try it out, give us feedback, even get some feedback from parents to make sure it's a good option for our elementary kids. Um, as I said earlier, our Canyons Online elementary and middle school teachers are currently using this. And I've allowed teachers in our buildings to actually use this as well. So I, I've just sent out some invites for a few teachers who will be doing our, our fall pilot. Um, what I'm requiring, so I don't want to just turn it on and, and set them loose. I want to provide support. I want to provide training. I want to get that feedback. So we're going to require six 30-minute synchronous safe sessions um, with some complete, with some required tasks. So they're kind of building up to the opportunity to turn it on. And part of that will be um, parent communication. So when it does happen, the parents and students aren't suddenly surprised that it looks a little bit different. So the next opt-in option will start um, like the deadline for them to say, hey, I'm interested, it's December 10th. <clears throat> and then I'll actually send out information like, okay, here's when we're meeting, um, here's what the required tasks are. And because there's not a huge influx of teachers wanting to do this right now, and I'm totally okay with that, um, I recognize that teachers learn at different speeds and they have different, we all learn differently. So in meeting with these teachers, I'm going to talk about the learning options we have. Um, if they want to work a little bit slower, a little bit faster, we're going to be able to accommodate that. So um, that information will be coming when we meet with them. And our first meeting is September 28th. And I think I have about five teachers willing to try it right now. And I am okay with that number. Um, I just want to get this in the hands of actual teachers and get their feedback and see if it's really worthwhile to do. Um, so thank you for taking the time to watch this Canvas for Elementary um, opt-in theme. Um, if you have any questions or if you have some initial feedback, I would love to hear it. Uh, you can email me at camille.cole at canyonsdistrict.org. You can definitely call me. Um, I just want to know, does this look like something that seems realistic? Does it seem based on feedback you've heard from teachers, parents, is it a way to go um, in terms of Canvas in our elementary classrooms? Um, on this screen, this is the same screen we always end all of our bite-sized PDs with. Um, we have links on our Canyons U page. Um, here's a link to our Canyons U bite-sized PD page. If there's ever any PDs that you want to see, we have the link on there on various topics. Um, if you're looking for relicensure credit, I never know what administrators need or want, but you have the option to get relicensure credit for watching this Bite Size PD. The link is there. If you have teachers that you're like, hey, I'd really like you to try and opt into this um, Canvas for Elementary theme and try it out, there is the opt-in form. Um, our, our fall cohort is now closed, but if anyone's looking to start maybe in January, they can fill out the form. They have to do so by December 10th. And then if you want a copy of this presentation, here is the URL. Um, I'll also put, make sure it's in the comments of, or in the details of the screencast. I think we're putting it on the YouTube channel, but you can definitely access this presentation as well. Thanks again for watching and have a great day.